I, I made sleeves. I made sleeves. Lexus Sunshine 83, it's always sunny here. Boop. Hey Sunshiners, Lexus Sunshine 83 right here. Hello, hello, happy sunny day. Today's video, we are doing something that I'm kind of terrified about. I've gone through a deep, deep, deep hole into watching people hand knit this cardigan. This cardigan I think is like $400 by Hope McCauley. It is absolutely beautiful. Literally their stuff is breathtaking. Do you want to go out? You want to go out? You don't want to hang out? I totally understand the pricing, but I don't have that money to spend on a cardigan. In no way am I trying to copy them. I mean, I don't even think I could copy them. And like I said, I have been watching so many videos of people hand knitting their own. I didn't even know hand knitting was a thing to be honest. And I'm down for anything that doesn't involve my sewing machine. Big shout out to Sarah Pan. Her video of creating this totally inspired me to do this video and a couple other different YouTubers. I will have their videos linked down below. So I ended up getting some yarn. I have about six things of yarn. These were not the colors I was wanting to go for, but they were all that was there. So I have purple and pink and it's gonna be a pastel dream cardigan. Anyway, let's start this adventure, this journey together and see if we can make our own chunky cardigan. To be honest, I just want like something that's cuddly and cute. I guess that's also, you know, a thing you want it to be cute. Alrighty, the materials that you will need, or at least what I ended up using. I got six of the Bernat Blanket Extras. Now my plan is to use the pink and purple interchangeably. This is kind of what I'm trying to create with the different colors. Now what I will need, obviously a back piece, two front pieces, and two sleeves. Yes, those are sleeves. And these were kind of the, again, outline of how many quote unquote loops or chains that I will be creating. I specifically wanted mine to be longer. I did not want it to be cropped. This was my original plan, but with the material that I got, because it's not that thick, it was very difficult to actually see. But to give you, I guess, an accurate of what I ended up creating is this. I just did it based on measurement. What that means with like loops, I don't know. So basically what you do Okay, this is going to be the start of the back piece, but to actually start the loop or chain of the bottom piece, you're gonna take your string slash noodle and you are going to kind of cross it over. I'm terrible at explaining things. Again, I'm a newbie. You're gonna pull the noodle to the left and just create a knot. And then from there, you're gonna take that little circle and take the other side of the noodle and put it into there. And if that did not make sense, hopefully seeing me do it a bunch of times will make sense, but you're just kind of creating a chain. This is again, going to be the bottom of our back piece. I am going to assume I went into it being 12 loops. The nice part is this like material is so soft. So I feel like it's gonna feel good. Now, once we have our kind of baseline, I don't know why I didn't film the next step, but it basically works like this. You have all the loops cause you pull them up and you're gonna take the, you know, loose noodle of the string and put it through the loops, creating a new loop and you go all the way around. Hopefully you're a visual learner. If you need to Google how to do it, I understand my instructions are garbage. <laughs> but honestly, my biggest advice is don't think about it too like hard. If you think about it too much, like you make it harder than it actually is. You really just have these loops that you are creating new loops through and you just kind of keep going until it's your desired length. So I am actually going to restart because I finally got the concept. And so as I was going through it, I just don't think I knew what I was actually doing until like a couple minutes ago. And now I just kind of want to like do it over because there's some holes that I didn't really realize. So yeah, I'm gonna redo it, which uh, honestly, now that I know how to do it, I feel a little bit better. Also taking it apart is so like satisfying because it just like comes off. I will come back when I am halfway through the back so then I can add a different color. So yes, I basically redid the entire back and I don't know how many loops I did. Maybe I did like, 10 loops and I am going to add my second color and hopefully this will kind of show it a little bit better because of the different colors. I'm gonna put it 
all the way around creating new loops and you just kind of keep going which i honestly really liked interchanging the colors because if i was starting to have like i guess difficulty on what am i doing for whatever reason because maybe i just like lost focus getting a new color kind of helped my eyes almost like reset salem was really into it i ended up giving him his own piece because he kept attacking mine but you really just kind of keep going it was very calming i honestly had a really good time throughout this make sure you are just double checking the length like i said i wanted mine to be longer little did i know it ended up being a little bit too long but just kind of keep double checking and of course measure yourself to figure out exact measurements for your cardigan and i just kind of kept going until i got to the top portion of my back piece where you want to basically create the same chain that you created at the beginning because that's how you are going to close it up so you are going to take your end loop that you have and then the loop right next to it and you're going to kind of join them with your fingers and you're going to take the loose noodle part and put it through there and that's going to lock kind of that in place and you are going to continue that all the way around it basically almost creates like a braiding effect and that's how you also lock in the corner so as you can see i have a little corner right there and once you get to the end you will be just tying it cutting off the excess make sure it's tight so it does not come apart but this is what mine is looking like it's definitely very loose you want obviously your chains to be thicker but i think this material just made it more difficult for it to actually not be see-through now it was a 31 inches i ended up cutting it which you will eventually see to be 22 inches because it literally went down to my knees so something to keep in mind make sure it's not too long <laughs> But now that we are done with the back, it's time for the front pieces. And I did not film enough footage of it, but I ended up doing the two front pieces. The first one I did literally was perfection. It was so beautiful, but unfortunately I did not film that one. So I'm going to film, I think it was the right side, but we are going to start it out just as we did with the other one. I just wanna reiterate it that way, if the way I explained it before, did it make sense? Hopefully just seeing it another time makes it make sense. But you are going to create that chain to be at the bottom of the front piece. And you obviously want it to be half of the width of the back piece because you're gonna have two of them. So I did measure it to kind of make sure. And we are gonna do literally the exact same thing. I wanted to interchange the different colors with this one, but it's, yeah, it's just basically the same thing. The sun is going down, no. I think I've been working on this consistently. I've taken like a, a couple breaks, but like consistently two hours, two, three hours. It's actually really calming. <laughs> like I'm having a pretty good time. The beginning I was definitely like frustrated because I was like, I just don't understand. But now it's like, I don't know. It's just kind of like chill. Do not knead on it. No, Salem is kneading on the back, no. I know it's soft. Yeah, I'm just gonna continue the front. I don't think I'm gonna finish today, which is unfortunate, but also I'd rather be safe than sorry. Now this one, I definitely made too long. Again, you will see in just a sec how long I ended up making it, but this was the one that I spent, I think like five hours straight at this point making. It took me kind of a long, I mean, that's with doing the other front piece. So two of them ended up taking five hours, which just to show you how long, these are the pieces. They are all supposed to be the same length. I have three different lengths going on, you know, only me. Okay, it is now day two. I am still feeling pretty like excited about it. Although yesterday I had been like hand knitting for such a long time that I then just started making mistakes. What I ended up realizing is number one, the back piece was way too long. I don't know how it happened, but I just made it too long. The one thing with this type of material is I can't really see the like chains, whereas a lot of other people used, I think like a wool yarn or just like a thicker type of yarn. And I definitely wanted to make my cardigan longer than ones I had seen, but I went like, Overboard. I don't know how this one became so freaking long. Like I basically made a scarf, which like super cute, but it is just so long. Like I have the other front piece and like, 
I don't know how this happened. Um, so I was in a little bit of a pickle and I was like, okay, well, do I restart it? I've already spent, you know, a couple hours on just this one front piece. And so I decided I'm just gonna cut it. And I figured if I was gonna cut it anyway versus starting over, then I might as well cut the back piece as well and just make the cardigan shorter. Basically the length I wanted it to originally. Basically when I came to cutting it, I mean, I don't really know the proper way to do it. I don't think there's a proper way, but I took the back piece, figured out exactly where I wanted it to hang I cut it and it honestly like wasn't too bad so I'm gonna do the same thing to this very long one and then also this other one it's not gonna be you know perfect or anything I'm just hoping I can make it now the same length as a back piece because I feel like now it's a it's a good length because originally I was like maybe I'll just you know make this really long one and then make another one that's shorter I mean I may still do that eventually but yeah I'm now going to cut these two to be shorter with the back piece and then close it up on the bottom and then do the sleeves yeah we'll see what happens <laughs> so to fix this mess I'm going to take the two Two front panels put them on top of the back panel so I actually know what the length needs to be and cut it from there the left side which I guess if you're looking at it from watching this video is the right side as you can see I have multiple colors so I ended up cutting a little bit too long with the right side it ended up making it a little bit lopsided but it wasn't that big of a deal but just wanted to say that make sure it actually is the correct length and basically from here you want to be super careful because it can unravel so easily and I am just trying to take off the excess pieces of yarn that were cut because a lot of the pieces or loops are still intact basically what I'm going to be doing is doing the reverse of creating that like baseline chain with loose yarn so I just want to make sure there's just loops not this excess small pieces of yarn that were cut and to be honest if you have a piece that ends up being like too loose because you cut another piece was keeping it in place or like tight you can just tie it I mean we are not looking for perfection here it's okay I won't tell anyone especially if it's gonna be on the inside nobody's gonna see any ties that you make honestly I felt like it was a good you know save <laughs> to not having to redo it completely all right, now that I have them the right size, I'm so just like distraught about this one because I know there are so many holes, but this is the one I just kept messing up on. It's now time for the sleeves. Now I already made one just because I wanted to see if I could do it like off camera so I could give, I guess, a little bit more like insight on how to do it but this is the one that I created it took me two hours made a lot of mistakes again I ended up originally making like this hand part a little or wrist part a little bit too short and I want them to again be very oversized so I ended up like you'll notice there's like a tightness in here if you can kind of see that indent that's where it ended so that's where I actually had made it originally the length and I just wanted to add on so I added from here up on kind of the same way that I had locked everything in place with those. I basically just did it backwards, but yeah, you kind of create this balloon sleeve looking thing. This is obviously inside out, so this isn't what it's going to look like, but this is what basically I'm creating and then it'll attach in. We'll get to that very soon. Okay, let's start with the next sleeve. We are going to start out like we've started out with all the other pieces. Now you want to make sure the length of this is going to fit around your wrist. You don't want it to be too tight, but you also don't want it to be too loose. So it's just based on your wrist. I honestly don't remember. Maybe it was like six loops or something. You're gonna take the excess noodle that is from the start of the chain that you created and put that through the end loop that you have and just make sure that it fits around your wrist. And from there, you're going to literally do the same thing that you did with everything else. You're gonna take the yarn and just put it through the loops. And I almost wish I would have done the sleeves first because it made me realize how tight it actually should be and what it should look like and you're just gonna go into a circle and to be honest I found it just easier because it wasn't unraveling I ended up doing it way too long and making it way just way too long so again learn from my mistake but once you get to a point where you want it to start I guess ballooning out you basically are going to add a new loop so you have your just 
already there loops you're just gonna add a loop by taking one of the straight fabrics like in between one of the loops and put your yarn through there and i did that every time i went around the circle so i would go around the circle new loop go around again new loop and from there you're gonna just kind of keep going until it gets to the desired thickness again i truly cannot say how many times i did it once you do get there you then are just gonna go through as normal so you're not going to add any more loops and you're just going to kind of keep going throughout the sleeve until it is long enough for your desired cardigan now i would recommend not checking if it goes over your shoulder because it won't go over the shoulder when you actually pull all the pieces together so make it i guess like half of your bicep that's where you want to have it actually hit and i also added different colors in there as well similar to how i had done previously where you just take the new yarn and put it through and kind of continue it over of course make sure that you tie the ends of it i don't know if i said it with all the other ones but tie the ends of it so it doesn't unravel the sleeves definitely took me quite a long time um mostly because i made them way too long guys i i made sleeves i made sleeves this is probably my best accomplishment in my entire life <laughs> So now that we have our two sleeves, we want to then obviously attach them to the rest of it. So just to kind of show you what the layout is gonna be like, we have the two front pieces and then the two sleeves. And this took me a while as well to kind of figure out like, okay, wait, how am I going to do this if this one is like inside out? The sleeves, you wanna make sure they are the right way, like the right side up. But what helped me is putting everything together of what it's going to look like on the inside. You're gonna start with a new thing of yarn and create a knot and start at the bottom of the panels and pull it through the two loops on the bottom. And you take the knot that was through those two loops on the bottom and you're gonna put it in front of the two loops that are above it and take the excess yarn and put it through that. So then you have a new knot loop and you're gonna continue it up. I really hope this makes sense, but you're gonna continue that through the entire piece. Obviously make sure that the front piece is attaching it to the sleeve that was a little bit hard because then it was curved but it's the same thing as you did you, it's just a little bit tighter and make sure that you attach the top parts of the front piece and the back piece make sure that they are straight it's supposed to kind of fit like a little bit like shrug on your shoulder so at first i was like wait is there gonna be any like room for my neck but ended up working out perfectly Alrighty, so it is technically the next day. I did finish yesterday and I tried to film like a big reveal, but the lighting was horrible and I just feel like this baby deserves the best. Honestly, I am so proud of myself and I'm just shocked with how it turned out in general. So let me put it on. We'll talk about things I would do differently in a sec, but let's just, let's just appreciate it. I'm happy I cut the back to make the actual cardigan shorter, but then I messed up with the arms, but that's okay. It just makes it super cozy. I mean, you can already see the left side is a little bit longer than the right, but look at it. Look at it. Oh my gosh. It's so cozy. It is so soft. It basically just feels like I'm wearing a blanket, which like that's all I really wanted because the arm parts are like so big. It creates this like big bulky effect, but I'm kind of digging it. it although it does kind of remind me there's like a organism. I forgot what it's called. Looks like this. I don't know why, but these arm like kind of situation kind of reminds me of that, but that's okay. I am so proud. I actually made it. Like I actually made something, especially for somebody that has never touched yarn before. I never touched it. This was probably the most fun I've ever had with a like DIY project. It was calming. It definitely took some work, but it only took me a day to make. Now that's with like all the mistakes that I had made, but still like that's amazing. Now, of course, like I said, it is not perfect <laughs> at all. I mean, honestly, I've, I kind of understand why I hope Macaulay uh, prices their stuff that way because I cannot imagine trying to mass produce it. But again, for my very first time, I think I did pretty good. Things I would do differently. Number one is get a different type of yarn. Now I originally bought a pretty thick yarn that was basically the same texture as this one, but like 
like a lot thicker and it was only supposed to take about two days to ship but apparently one of the colors I bought was out of stock and it didn't say that so fast forward about a week and a half after I had put in my order I emailed them being like hey what's going on because I wanted to film this video and they told me it was out of stock and it was gonna take about two more weeks and so I ended up canceling my order and taking a look at what Joanne Fabrics had and this was the only yarn I could find that was specifically this texture but I think having a thicker yarn would have made it so much easier to actually like know how many chains I was doing because it was so thin honestly maybe it's just my eyesight I had to put my glasses on at one point just because I couldn't tell like what chain I was on so all the videos I watched that were like okay you're gonna do like 20 chains or like 20 loops I I couldn't tell which I think is why then I ended up making it so freaking long like if I would have cut the bottom piece and like the front pieces it basically would have been a dress so I'm really happy I ended up cutting it you can technically if you have a thinner material like double like cross it or something. I read about that after I made this. I would love to try this again, but use a thicker yarn and different colors. But number two, another thing to keep in mind is making sure that your chains are tight. Technically, I did the back piece twice. I ended up redoing it and I didn't really understand how it was supposed to look. But the nice part is if I did make a mistake, it wasn't like the end of the world. And also it's like supposed to be chunky and like kind of all over the place. So I think it's very forgiving. And if you have never done like a crafting DIY thing from YouTube this would be the one thing I would recommend because yeah there's not too much that can go wrong I don't necessarily know what it will be like in the washing machine a future Alexa can worry about that honestly I'm just really proud of myself like I sent a photo to my mom and I was like oh my god like I made a cardigan that is just crazy definitely let me know in the comments down below if you guys have made this before or if you are gonna try it out and I'm hoping my I guess instructions were helpful obviously I don't think this was necessarily like a full-on how-to tutorial because I have no idea what the heck I'm talking about definitely want to honestly like go into the world of hand knitting and like knitting in general but if you guys would like to continue to see my face then make sure to subscribe right down below and hit that little bell to be notified every time I make a new video also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Alex and Trent 83 to keep up to date with me during the week. I will see you guys in my next video. I hope you have a super sunny day. Enjoy life, be happy, and all of it lots. Bye!